Okay, so Mr. Jose is uh, the host. In Cotton, you have to unmute. Oh, sorry, I'm talking to my family. <laughs> okay. So we can start, or we wait a, a little bit uh, before? I think we can start now, maybe we start. So can I make a short introduction first? Like TTA is a group that brings all the Turkish people living in Thailand and APEC for different purposes together. So our mission is to connect you with the locals and other international community to improve your experience and bring more follow to your lifestyle, business and work. Today, we are so lucky to successfully invite Mr. Jose, the Managing Director of Energy in Asia and Mr. Moore, the solar expert of Anna Green Asia. The webinar will cover the application and future of solar energy in Thailand. So let's pass the time today. Welcome, please. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, Cotton. And uh, yes, uh, we were talking with uh, Ibrahim uh, mouth ago about this uh, webinar. And uh, we try to uh, to talk. We are we're going to try to explain how is uh, solar is working here in Thailand, and, and, and I mean how it could be interested, you know, for all these uh, uh, Turkish uh, companies that they are uh, operating here in Thailand. So, uh, if you want, maybe we can start with the presentation. Yes. Mr. Jose, are you going to share the PPT or oh, you would I, like me to share? I think uh, we were talking uh, Murat to do it, or if not, I can try to do it, no problem. I could try to do it. Okay. Only the host can share, so you can... Okay. You are, you are the host right now. Okay, I wrote it, so I go here to um, the option. Okay. Okay. This number one. And right, can you see right now? Yes, we can see that. Okay. Okay. Well, basically, I would like to start with the uh, the trend of solar, not only in Thailand, you know, not only in Southeast Asia or in Asia, so in the worldwide, you know, what is happening in the last uh, 20 years. And uh, you can see very clear in this chart that uh, solar is, is, is was growing very fast, you know, during the, 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 the decay so from, can, yeah. Maybe you can make the full screen to better see. Okay. Uh, you want me to do the- uh, In the downside in the- Yeah, the down, yeah. Down right, yes. The last one, the last one. The last one, okay. No, no, the, the, the one more, one more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Should work now. Yes. Can, can, can you see now? Not yet. Waiting. No, we move to another one. No, no. No, maybe it's you. You are you having it to screen? Yeah, I'm using to screen. That's a problem. Move to the other screen. Uh, let me try to uh, stop this. Okay, if you want, you can give me the host and I can share. No problem. No. Okay, I mentioned. No, I move to the other screen. I cannot move to the and show. Okay, I will try. I will try again. Okay. Right. 
No, you cannot see, no? No, I have a problem because it's moving to, to another screen, so. Okay, no problem. Anyway, can you see like this better or? Oh, I think it's better. Yeah, much better here, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I will try to do a song every, every, every slide. So you can see here from 2005 to 2010, 11, you know how the solar was growing, you know, from zero, zero uh, billion US dollar investment to almost 150 billion investment, you know. So this is a big revolution, you know, in, uh, for this industry. Uh, here uh, we can see perfectly, you know, one of the, uh, our competitors, you know, in uh, renewable energies is always the wind, but uh, wind is uh, same as solar, you know, depend of the country, some countries, they are more, uh, they are better, you know, to for, for, for wind energy and other countries, they, they have better condition for solar. Uh, in particular here in Thailand, uh, we try to install some with uh, farms uh, in, during 2014, 2015, uh, during these years, and they are working properly, but uh, uh, the problem that Thailand is not a windy country. So basically we have some special region in Thailand that we can install uh, wind, but we need some special technology because the wind is a very low uh, uh, speed. So we need a very high, we have a, we need to install very high uh, uh, turbines, you know, which is quite expensive and sometimes it's, it's not easy, the, the, the installation and then the operation and maintenance. Uh, on, on, the other, on, on the other hand, <clears throat> on the other hand, solar is, is, is quite convenient in, in, in Thailand, you know. The, we will see later on, Murat is going to show us, you know, the solar map in, in Thailand. And it's a country with a solar, uh, a, a, a huge solar irradiation, you know, and uh, we have some special uh, region, especially in, in the center of the country, but as well, everywhere that you go, you can find good condition to install uh, solar and you can get very good uh, performance. Uh, right now in 2021, uh, I don't have here the data, but uh, according with the, I mean, what, uh, uh, with the data that, uh, that I was reading, you know, it should be around 200, 200 billion investment, you know, in, in solar, which is huge, you know. Uh, problem as well, it, maybe we need to uh, revise this uh, uh, figure because of the COVID impact, you know. In the, in the last year, we were having some problem in the solar industry. Uh, you know, from 2008, uh, I remember, you know, the first project that we were doing in, in Spain and in Germany, at that time, you know, we, we stole the, 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 the watts, you know, let's say the, the, the price of the watt was in six euros per, per, per watt. And uh, right now in 2020, it was a uh, lower than, than one euro, you know, means that in 12 years, we reduced the cost of the energy of this uh, technology from six euros to one euro. Uh, this is a, this is, I mean, this is a quite significant. Uh, probably in 2021, this price couldn't, uh, I mean, we couldn't reduce the, the, this cost, you know, or the price of the watt, uh, because we were having some uh, issues with the COVID, especially with the transportation, as we know, and as well with the lack of some uh, raw material like copper, aluminium, and uh, glass, and, uh, and silicon as well, you know. Anyway, let's go ahead, and then we can talk about the with the power development development plan in Thailand and as well the alternative energy development plan uh, that uh, we are developing here in Thailand from 2014 you know so this is coming from the government and uh, uh, at that time in 2014 they, they, they launched these uh, uh, these plans you know and in these plans what they try to to do is, uh, is to to organize all things you know to put all the resources to get this target that we want to get in 2036. As you can see, uh, this government took seriously, you know, renewable energies. So in 2015, let's say that 7% of the energy that we have in, in Thailand was uh, renewable energies. And the target for 2036, uh, they wanted to increase to 18%. Uh, I will tell you what's happened, you know, because it's, it's sometimes, you know, 
uh, it's, it's the good thing of solar, you know, sometimes maybe we don't need the intervention of the of the government, we don't need public subsidies, we don't need anything, you know, to 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 support this energy, because in some countries like Thailand, it's, they say it's organic energy, you know, it's something that we don't need to promote or to boost because it's can't do it alone, you know. So what's happened is that uh, in 2000, as, as you can see here, uh, uh, in the Alternative Energy Development Plan, we were talking in the item number eight, uh, the government wanted to install six gigawatt, six gigawatt by 2036. And what's happened is what I was talking before, you know, this six gigawatt we already, we already reached. So, we have in Thailand right now more than six gigawatt in operation. What's happened? So after that, we have to do, or the government have to do a remap. And they, you know, they they thought, okay, if now in 2022 we have six gigawatt, obviously the target should be to go to almost 17 gigawatt by 2036, which means that we have 11 gigawatt for the next, let's say, 14, 15 years. Uh, let's say that uh, we will grow in this market in an average of one gigawatt, around one gigawatt uh, per year, which is very attractive, you know, it's very interesting. Most of the, to understand how we are going to store all this uh, capacity, we should focus a little bit in, in the consumption frame of time. Uh, this is a, this frame is very uh, standard, you know, for uh, uh, countries that they have a very high uh, percentage of uh, uh, industries and, and especially industry, you know. So you can see here that 42% of the consumption is uh, going to, to factories, you know. Around 20% is business user, let's say this is commercial uh, customer. So here we have the C and I, as we call, you know, commercial and industrial customers. So it's 42 plus almost 20%. So more than 60% of the energy consumption in Thailand is going to be consumed by factories and the commercial. Then we have a small general service. Then we have here the residential market that is quite interesting as well, 24%. We can talk later on about this market. And then we have some remaining here, the rest, you know. So basically the big demand of the electricity is factories and commercial customer. So that's the reason uh, in Thailand, we are very focused to uh, provide solar energy to this customer. Because the good thing is that these factories and these commercial uh, buildings, they have a very nice uh, rooftop, you know? And this rooftop usually in Thailand, we don't need a special requirement about orientation and tilt, and, and so we can uh, uh, optimize, you know, and we can uh, utilize, you know, all this uh, rooftop to install, uh, to install uh, solar, uh, solar installation. Okay. Can you see now? Uh, can yeah. you see this? Yes. Yes, it's okay. Okay, no, because I changed to, to another, another screen now. Okay, perfect. So this is how is the uh, frame consumption here in Thailand. Another uh, thing that I would like to explain is how the electrical system is working in Thailand. So with these two things, we can understand how we can integrate the solar solution. Uh, basically, like uh, in most of the countries, we have four stations, you know, we have the generation. So yes. You change the screen. You are, yes. you are on the page seven because we don't see that one. We are still in the, in the old one. Okay, and now can you see? Yes, now we can see. Okay, so I cannot change, or I will try to change the camera. So it will be better. Better now? Okay. So basically, we have four stages, you know, in the electrical system, the generation, transmission, distribution, and then we have the consumption. In generation, basically, we have a monopoly in Thailand and it's called IGAT, you know? So IGAT uh, right now is the, the company, it's a public company that they manage, you know, the generation. Most of the, I would say, uh, theoretically around 40% uh, 
but then they have many, uh, they are shareholders in some IPPs, very powerful in Thailand, like Raj Group of ECO. So basically, I would say that I believe more than 50% of the generation is coming from EGAT and uh, its uh, subsidiaries. You know? Uh, then we have IPPs, and then we have uh, as well. We need to import electricity from some countries like uh, Malaysia and, and and Laos, and then we have as well the small power producer. Uh, the transmission lines belong to IGAT as well, so all their generation go to uh, IGAT uh, transmission lines, and then <clears throat> we have to basically we have two distributor in Thailand, MBA that is operating in Bangkok and PA that is operating in the rest of the country. And well, we have here all the uh, consumer. Okay, so we have here uh, well, factories, uh, all the consumer that we were talking before. And as well, we have uh, another uh, generator that is the very small power producer. These people, they have to produce less than 10 megawatt and they deal directly with MBA and PA to put this energy into the system. Okay, so this is how the, the system is working. So usually if you want to uh, install a solar farm, for example, of 50 megawatt, you have to set up a company and to be like a, a small power producer, and maybe you can sell directly, or you can go uh, to set up IPP and to put this energy in EGA transmission line. You know? uh, in our case, what we are doing is, uh, is quite simple because we are going to store the energy exactly in the same point that we consume the energy. Uh, so uh, when, when we talk with our customer, uh, we try to uh, analyze, and Murat then is going to uh, talk a little bit more in detail about this, uh, about how we analyze the daily load of our, of, of our customer. And what we try is to analyze the, this daily load of, from our customer, we analyze as well the, the 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 rooftop and what we do is to uh, i mean to calculate exactly the solar power that we can install to generate electricity exactly for the consumption of the uh, factory uh, the reason is that uh, so far in thailand we don't have net metering so uh, that's uh, make a little bit more complicated the, the to optimize the size of the installation because when we uh, want to uh, uh, offer to our customer our solar solution, we need to uh, know exactly how many kilowatts we can install uh, because we need to consider that we cannot eject energy to the grid because so far uh, the PA and MEA, they don't, they don't accept you know, injection of energy to the grid. And uh, even they don't pay anything, you know, for this. Uh, in the worst case that we inject energy, they are not going to pay any money for this kilowatt hour. Okay. So now I think we, we are going to talk about the technical uh, solar rooftop in Thailand. And uh, then I, I, will, I will go back, you know, uh, with some example with one of our customers. And we will give some uh, project reference of uh, Enerring. And, uh, and, uh, and that's all. I mean, then maybe we can talk about uh, later on if there are any questions from, from some of the people here in the webinar. So I think, Murat, if you want, you can start now. You're... Okay, so thank you so much. Maybe you, uh, we can share the, change the host. Yes. And I can share my screen. Can you give me the access, please? I have to do it? Yes, you you are the host right now. You have to change. <laughs> okay. So, uh, good. Uh, I believe I have to uh, stop uh, share screen. All right. Okay. Mm. What I have to do, multiple, multiple parts, multiple participants. Well, you, you just need to click right uh, on Murat's uh, picture and you will see. Murat picture. Yeah. Okay. Right. Or oh, three dots. There are three dots on, on his picture. I see Murat three dots.
top right, the top right side, we have three dots. One zero. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with Zoom meeting. Uh, yep, uh, no, I don't see here. As to start to video. Can you? Did you see the option uh, make uh, him host? I think I'm going to put multiple participant can share simultaneously or only all participants. Multiple is also okay. Okay, multiple. Done. Okay, thank you. Now I can. Okay, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Mm, yes, we can. Okay, so I would like to explain a little bit about the engineering principle because, yes, this uh, project, I mean, the solar project is so important in the financing and uh, as well in the part of the business, but for the engineering side, there are a lot of points is so critical for the project because this uh, investment is going to be minimum 20, 25 years. So in the beginning of the uh, project, you have to uh, carefully analyze. Uh, you are making something can stay longer, uh, 20, 25 years, and you don't have a big issues. So there are some uh, main parts you have to go through uh, one by one. I'm not gonna give you too much technical. I don't want to make so academic meeting. <laughs> so I will just go to basics. So there are some parameters in this uh, case, in this uh, solar systems. Uh, first of all, the geographical side parameters. So you have to analyze and we are using some special software for these things as well, but I will show you in the next uh, page. But now you have to take latitude, longitude, altitude, time zone, and so on. This uh, parameters is gonna give us some metonome data, which is showing the irradiance uh, and the temperature uh, in that location. And after that, we can move to orientation. This is more part of the, how is the solar panels orientation, how they are uh, gonna, we are gonna make the installation, and we have some shadows and and more. Like uh, we have to make the array uh, between a space. So this space is gonna help uh, to efficiency in the positive side. So another thing is the system design. We have to consider many parameters as well. And after this uh, design, we have to consider in our system, the general losses, which is thermal, wind, BC, AC, the cable losses, and some uh, losses coming from the PV and inverters. So before go through for the PV panels, I would like to uh, show what is uh, PV, uh, so what is irradiance. Irradiance is a data and is showing us every uh, area, every uh, unit area, how much power we have, we are receiving from the sun. So Thailand is the one of the best countries in the world for this case, you know, it's so hot outside and especially only is not only, by the way, irradiance is not mean if you have very high temperature, it doesn't mean you have a very good irradiance. Irradiance is the, like, uh, is the photons, is touching the ground. So this is more about that. And we are receiving this data from some special uh, suppliers. They are recording this data and we supply and we, get exact location. So after that, the temperature is so important for solar. And many uh, people believe that if you have a very high temperature, it's gonna be solar very good, uh, but it doesn't work like that. Generally, if you have very high temperature, this is affecting in the versa, in the negative side of the uh, project, uh, because more uh, heating is mean the solar panels is losing uh, more thermal. So in this case, what we are doing, we are trying to make a good ventilation and isolate from the roof around 20 or 30 
millimeters or two, three something centimeters. So um, this is making the solar panels more cool and more efficient. You can see the Bangkok area is the more uh, high temperatures we have and the rest. So before start the system design, we have to analyze the your promise. We have to see your factory or your home or anywhere you want to install. It's okay for the solar. In this case, we have to carefully examine uh, to this place and to get some notes. And in this notes, we can see uh, how much you can install and where we can install. And it is going to be shading in the these places because shading is a so critical in the solar because if you have shading, this means you are going to lose those strings, those solar panels. And but it depends. So that's why we have to go and carefully see, visually uh, inspect, and to take some notes and make some analysis in 3D. And as well, we have to follow your requirements. Uh, in this case, your budget, financing needs. There are two sides of these projects, EPC and PPA. EPC is engineering, procurement, and construction. In this case, engineering, procurement, and construction, we are built for you and you invest with all your money. And another option is the PPA with power purchase agreement in one. And this one is you don't invest any money. You just say, I have a rooftop and I want to install. So we carefully check and analyze. And then we are making agreement with you like a 20, 25 year or 15 years, depends on uh, the agreement. And you are buying the electricity from us. Yeah. This like uh, you are making agreement with the PA or MEA and you are telling, I will buy electricity from you. But now the price for Thailand is around four Taiba per kilowatt hour. But the PPA, you can almost get a discount uh, 50 percent or maybe it uh, depends depends on your the project like let's say two maybe you will pay two taiba per kilowatt hour so if you pay one million for one month for the electricity next month you will pay only five hundred thousand so this is a lot of money to save and then we have some uh, types of then i would like to talk about a bit TV modules. This is the solar modules. They are made from the uh, silicon semiconductors. And then these cells gather together and they are making one single solar panels. And we cannot use the single solar panels directly. So we have to make some arrays. So let's say uh, 15 or 20 or less 10 or 20 solar panels and gathering one and is making one DC solar array. And there are some types of the solar panels is monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and tin film. Generally, uh, in Thailand was the famous one before polycrystalline. Why? Because it was cheap and easy to produce and good efficient. Now, but now the market is changed two, three years ago. The price of the monocrystalline decreased a lot and almost uh, it get cheaper than uh, polycrystalline or aqueal. Let's say aqueal price now, and now because the polycrystalline have more efficient, as more efficiency than the polycrystalline uh, solar panels. Now the this monocrystalline became a trend in Thailand, and you can reach almost 20, 21, or 23 uh, percent of efficiency depends on the uh, product you have. And inside of solar panels, what we have, I will just make it very quick here. We have the aluminum frame for the cover and to protect from the outside effect. And we have the glass as well, same protect effect and to get the sunlight to solar cell. And we have ever film, this ethylene vinyl exudate and highly transparent uh, plastic. And then we have the solar cells. This is the semiconductors as uh, silicones. We have N and P type of uh, cells here. And then we have some protectors. So basically this is one solar panel in the outside you, you saw. And we have the junction bar in, in the back. And this is the connecting the positive and negative cables. 
as I told you, this is so important uh, because uh, which type of solar uh, modules you are using is affecting your price and your project. Generally, the monocrystalline is the more best efficient solar panels in the market right now. And you can see generally monocrystalline is like a black solar uh, modules. If you go outside and if you see some solar panels and those, if fully is black is mean generally monocrystalline and more efficient. As I told you, this was before so expensive. Now many players in the market, they start to produce in the cheap price. Uh, for example, China and the USA is leading countries to produce this type of uh, solar modules. And polycrystalline now is not so popular because it's less efficient, but still is doing good. And now we have the tin film as well. And this is also um is not uh, good for many projects you have to have a special place for the install this one and i would like to explain some uh manufacturers in the markets this is the tr1 bloomberg list tr1 is the mean the classify of the solar modules and the tr1 is the best solar modules uh, means so we have many players in the, we have many manufacturers and the Jinko, Seraphim, Longi, and so on. They are doing very high efficient solar modules and then with a good price. You, as you can see, mainly they are Chinese. They are Chinese. So the solar inverters, yes, uh, unfortunately, you cannot use the electricity produced by the solar uh, cell directly to your uh, household appliances because you have you are getting dc so you have to convert this energy to ac because all the household appliances we have they are using the ac so that's why we have to use some inverters and these inverters is helping us to convert this dc power we are having a dc here and then we are coming here to change dc to ac then we can use in our house or our factory so there are some type of inverters. Uh, I don't want to go so deeply, but central spring and micro inverters. Generally in the markets, we have spring inverters because is about the financing because more cheap and as well, not say not uh, the cheapest one generally is central inverters because uh, it's you are installing only one or two inverters in all the place and then you can manage but the problem if you lose one or two solar modules is mean you are losing all the uh, array but here you can be more flexible with losing some strings sometimes because you are, you are going to have shading so maybe this is going to be not active in one hour or 30 minutes depends but this is more uh, reliable Another one is the micro inverters, but generally this is about the prices. You can control one by one. It's gonna be you are gonna make micro inverters, but this is about the price. It's gonna be so expensive than any other options. Then we have the manufacturers. Now the in Thailand leading brands is Huawei and Solar Age, um, because of as I told you, it's about the price and the quality. And ABB and SMA also is doing good but not like before because uh, the Chinese and the Israel is now is the leading brands. Here we have two system for the solar on grid and off grid. Generally in Thailand, the people wants to go on grid because it's more um, good for the continuous power generation. On grid, it means you are having solar, but you are connecting the grid. So let's say here you have PA or MEA. So you are consuming, you are getting energy from PA, MEA plus solar because the solar is only active in the daily, in the sun hours. In the nighttime, if you are a shopping mall or a sport mall or something, you have to use energy in the nighttime. So you need a grid. You need a grid to supply energy to you. Another option is off-grid. This means you don't need any MEA or PA or any grids. And, but 
in this case you have to use some batteries <coughs> uh, because if you need the energy in the nighttime of course you have to get supply or in this case you are charging you are installing more than your demand for the solar and let's say 50 percent you are using in the on hours and the 50 percent you will store in the batteries to use later but batteries is still is a new technologies they need to develop um, carefully and because the price is so expensive the year is only 10 years after that you have to replace uh, lithium batteries you know from your phones uh, from your laptops they have always issues after two three years so this market still is open to develop and engineers are working on it i believe in five years we will have more reliable products in the long term and as well we have to analyze the performance of the system is mean uh, what do you expect what do you expect and in the maximum and what do you have this is giving the pr is performance ratio Generally, is eight percent in Thailand, so it's very good because the other European countries they have this seventy-five uh, seventy percent. So Thailand is good for this performance ratio too uh, in the table. Okay, and then how we are analyzing before uh, start the construction because we have to estimate carefully the solar is worth or not for your place. So we are using some special software to analyze. Generally, PVC is the leading software from Switzerland. And we are using this brand generally. And we are putting your data exactly what we are gonna do, which product we will use, and what inverters, which solar panels, how is gonna be the orientation and all the parameters. After that, PVC is giving us some results. And these results are generally so precise uh, they have like a two or three percent of the mistake, uh, maybe sometimes less. Is showing us the solar, how much you will produce in one year and so on. So I would like to show one example, what we are doing exactly, because the us build uh, is a key point of the project. So we are, this is the one customer of us, is the Lecor set in Lampu. We install them two megawatts, and we are first of all making one layout with the, all the details and showing how showing uh, how much we can install according to their consumption. As you can see, we don't go fully because we have to decide the power according to your consumption. Uh, in Thailand, I will explain in the next page. We cannot do net metering. Net metering, which, which means you can overproduce and sell this energy to government but legally in thailand government doesn't want to buy this energy uh, in turkey as well uh, we can sell this energy you know uh, many uh, people is doing they are overproduced or they are making some solar farm and they are uh, signing a contract with the government and they are selling in 10 years then they renew their contract but in Thailand, unfortunately, we cannot do so. We have to uh, calculate uh, precisely uh, how much you can consume and make sure we don't overproduce. So this is the layout and the analyze the, about the stringing and all the brand of the solar modules. And we also making 3D for the shading and the shade uh, because we have to analyze the system is not going to be affect too much uh, from the shading. And after that, we have the electric, we make a single line diagram to legalize and to make all the connections right. Some of them as well, the inverter connection. So we have to as well make some drawing for the, how we are gonna install the inverters, how we are gonna allocate all the uh, new components. So we have some mounting structure and the monitoring is also so important because monitoring is is the key point in the solar you have to uh, make a you have to monitor your system 20 to 25 years and make sure all the things is okay 
So we are using some special data logger from Huawei or another brand, depends on the customer needs. And we are sending this data to Huawei Cloud. In Huawei Cloud, we have a nice monitoring system and we can see all the data in that time. So we are getting a very uh, fast data information from your, uh, from your premise and we are monitoring. We are also using some, <coughs> sorry, a special sensor, this is pyranometer. We are measuring the weather. And this is important because we are telling, we are making agreements accordingly our uh, estimations because we want to be so trustworthy with you. So we are making, we are providing the analyze for you and we are telling, we can produce this energy and we, we make sure we produce and offer the project. So we have to measure carefully and to guarantee these values. So we are guaranteed and we don't um, make you surprised or we don't provide you, you can produce a lot, but after one year you will see nothing because many, Many people is doing <laughs> right now. So as well, we have the solar MDBs to connect your place. And that's the software, the PVCs, as I explained. We are getting data and we are insert your information with all the things and we are getting some uh, shadings diagram and as well the horizon for your place. And then we are seeing how much you can produce in total for one year. In here, you can see we, have the data here yes this one for two megawatt they can produce almost three gigawatt hour a year in this place in Lampu. yes some monitoring system uh, as i as we say uh, we don't have uh, some special agreement with any brand so we want to be uh, trustworthy and we want to provide the best products all the time so that's why we don't go for the distributorship any brand <clears throat> Sorry. So there are some monitoring <clears throat> monitoring system. Yeah, this is the important part because the zero injection is mean you don't inject any energy to grid because. If you inject any energy to grid, the government is charging you. This is there is a penal there is a penalty for this issue because the government doesn't want any interruption from another producer. We have one uh, control system for this uh, problem. So if you are producing in that time, let's say generally in the 12 uh, a.m. or 12 p.m., you have, we have this because of radiation is reaching the peak in that time. So in this case, you are producing maybe more, the, and but you don't need that time. Maybe it's Sunday, maybe it's a holiday, maybe you close the factory or your home one, uh, one hour. So what we are doing, we have, the, we have the meter and we are following your consumption. So we are decreasing the efficiency of the system. So we make sure we, you don't overproduce. And this is important, as I told you, because there's a very um, big charges from the government if you inject energy. And this is one of them is showing because the green line here, the solar can produce and the blue line is the self consumption and the area space between is showing us the zero injection, which means the, the loss because the solar could produce accordingly your information, your meter, the red line is the meter. We don't go this one because you don't consume. Normally, as I told you, uh, you can sell this energy to government in Europe or in USA, but yeah, unfortunately, right now we don't have this option. Maybe in five, 10 years, it's gonna be possible. But not right now, no. And as well, after the project, you have to keep good operation and maintenance uh, because 
the solar panels can be dirty or there are some issues but the the good thing of the solar system is not uh, require too much operation and maintenance the other type of the uh, produce uh, system like uh, coal like a biogas and so on because the solar is generally you have to keep some basic operation and easy maintenance then you will have not problem long time so what we are doing we carefully analyze your system all the time and we are making the reports every time for the monthly and also daily depends and then we analyze with the, our data with our estimation and as well to know what happened in daily some charts and as well cleaning and mechanical check is important generally we recommend four times a year uh, so every quarter to clean the solar panels with some basic uh, water and some uh, scrubs not um, not making any crash and as well this is the inverters this is the mdb we have to check the conditions and as well in the once a year we have to check all the cables and all the electrical connections are okay and they are still working properly so that's all for the electrical uh, the engineering part uh, yes there are a lot of things but i don't I want to make you too much uh, informative in this case. So we can continue with Jose. Yes, thank you so much for the amazing uh, sharing and inspiration regarding the solar energy. So I think we got some questions from the chat box. The first one is like, what is the two main problems for solar in uh, implementation in Thailand? Uh, Jose, Mr. Rudy, you want to answer yeah, this? Yes, I can. I can. No problem. Uh, basically, uh, uh, when we talk about commercial and industrial customer, uh, there is no any constraints. You know, uh, what is a little bit difficult in Thailand uh, is the legalization. Basically, the legalization. Uh, the rest of the pr procedure, you know, that we need to comply is uh, they are affordable. So I would say that there are not many uh, constraints, you know, in the Thailand solar market. In the same time, I'm showing some project uh, from us in Thailand. You can continue. Oh, yes. When we were talking before, uh, the, what uh, what we are missing in Thailand is uh, the net metering, net metering policy. Um, so, so what's happening is as uh, we as I explained before, and Murata as well already explained, we cannot inject inject energy to the grid. So we need to store some uh, control system to avoid any injection to the grid. So I think it could be only the main constraint. And about the legalization is uh, is is quite complex, you know, because compared with other countries, here we have several institutions that we need to approach, you know, to legalize the project. So we have to go to the local authorities, usually with Obotor or with the DMA. Then we have to go to DEDE, ERC, and uh, finally with the utility PA or MBA. This is in the case that the project is less than one megawatt. When we are talking about project uh, more than one megawatt, as well, we need to include another uh, uh, institution that is called DIW, uh, that we need to request uh, uh, like a, a factory license, which is a little bit complex, you know, for this kind of uh, project that they are quite simple. And more question, Cotton? Oh, yes, uh, they yeah. do have the second question is like, which country in ASEAN is the best uh, for solar energy implementation in terms of progress? Is it Thailand? It is, it is. From my point of view, it's, it's Thailand. Uh, Thailand right now is, uh, I, will, I will say it's, it's the reference in Southeast Asia. 
Uh, of course, now some uh, countries as well, they, they are doing or they were doing things, you know, like uh, uh, Philippines during 2015, 2016, they were doing some, some project and they are doing projects, solar project and they, they, Vietnam, they, they, I mean, they, they stole, I don't know how many gigawatt, a lot, you know, last year, in the last two years, but they already stopped, you know. Uh, Malaysia as well is a, is a good market, you know, it's growing slowly. Uh, Indonesia is the only one uh, that I, I don't know, I don't see much uh, uh, progress. And then we have some small countries like Cambodia and uh, uh, Laos and Myanmar that uh, basically they are struggling right now. So they are not much, uh, they are not doing much things, you know, in, in solar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So there are two more questions to Mr. Moore. The first question is, what is the longest lifetime of PV panels? It was 30 years before. So how long is it now? I mean, generally, uh, there, is no const uh, there is no constraint for this uh, lifetime because the manufacturer, generally, they are guaranteed for 25 and 30 years. But it can uh, last longer. The, but every year you are going to have annual degradation. This is also depends on the solar brands and the product you have. But generally average is 0.06% every year you will have annual degradation. In the first year you will have around 1.5%, but the rest of the, the year after the sale first year, you will have the average 0.06% annual degradation. As I told you, maybe it's going to be longer, 40, 45, but generally is 40, 45 years. You have already very less efficient solar modules. Mm, yeah. And the second question is, how is the storage capacity for solar energy? Is it the future? This is uh, more about of the batteries because now this is not depends on the solar modules. Uh, the battery technology is still new. The lithium batteries are still new and need to develop. And what we are expecting, generally because they are the solar uh, manufacturers and the battery manufacturers are different brands. They, are, they have the different uh, companies. So this is more depends on the, the development of uh, batteries in the future. Right now, uh, they have the lifetime for 10 years and after 10 years you have to replace because your system is going to be 25, might be 30 years. So they are still new and need to develop. Right now, um, many brands, I think now the big players in the market is Samsung and LG is working on these uh, batteries. Also in the future, we can have best, better product to have but still is doing good. And you can store almost 40, 50% of your uh, production to batteries. And you can use in the nighttime or in the uh, day you need more. Mm. Oh, thank you. I think if no more question, I think uh, it is the end of our webinar today. So thank you so much for Mr. Jose and Mr. Moore for giving us such a like great webinar to know about solar energy in Thailand. You're welcome. If you do have any question, like. Well, I would like to thank you uh, to you, Cotton, first of all, uh, and also to Jose and Murat, definitely. Well, I, I tried to write a couple of questions in the chat box, uh, but yeah, I mean, Jose, I mean, maybe I can ask you, I mean, what's, what's, uh, what's the future of solar energy in the world and in the Thailand? What do you think? Because in many countries now, uh, they are saying uh, its demand is not much. There are lots of uh, solar energy implementation and looks like uh, investors, they are not investing much in some of the countries like in Europe. In Thailand, I don't know how it is in Vietnam, but what do you see, I mean, for the future, or the progress is in, in the region, is it going well, generally? I think it's going quite well. Uh, of course, we cannot compare Europe with uh, Southeast Asia, uh, completely different. 
uh, the electrical system are different, the irradiation are different, the, all things are completely different. So I believe the future of solar in Thailand is uh, amazing. It's going to be really nice uh, future in the, in the next decade. So as I said before, we, we are now very focused in commercial and industrial customer. And uh, then we have another target that is the residential. Um, as you can see, uh, we have to remap, you know, the government have to remap, you know, the uh, alternative development plan, the alternative energy development plan, because they wanted to reach six gigawatt of solar in 2036. And in 2022, we already, we already got it. So they need to remap and to say, okay, we have to increase to 17 gigawatts which means that from six to 17, we have 11 gigawatt for the next 12, 14 years. You know? uh, this is, a, I mean, this is a, a real market, you know? Uh, right now, 70, we saw before in one of my slides, but uh, around 75%, I don't remember now, of the energy that uh, uh, is consumed in, the, that is produced, is generated in Thailand, is coming from uh, natural gas. Uh, they want to reduce this percentage to from 60 something percent to 35 percent. Uh, this is a big challenge, you know, and the renewable energy is are, are going to play, you know, I, I, I mean, are going to be a good player, you know, uh, uh, something that we need to, to consider and to take into account. That's the reason I believe the, the future of solar in Thailand is, uh, is, is wonderful. Yeah, thank you very much, Jose. Well, I see not not big progress actually. I mean, because there are, you see, in the industry, see, there are lots of factories. They should start implementation today, all of them. But most of them, they have got concern, and I think I'm not sure when the government will allow. Uh, I mean, uh, the clients or the investors to inject uh, to do a grid. The, the, that's also a big uh, question mark. Yes, so I mean, this is well, let's see here what will happen in the future. Hopefully, they will allow uh, investors or the clients who I mean, uh, has the solar energy so they can inject when they don't use uh, to the grid and the government can buy from them. But not sure if they have got like concrete plan for this one. So far, I say I don't think it's going to happen the net metering, so it could happen, but maybe in future. Uh, yes. But right now we have, as you know, you know, we have a lot of in the industrial estate here in Thailand and uh, we're, we are working on with all these customers and uh, sooner or later they are going to store solar, you know. Uh, we have organic growth, which I like it, you know, I don't like this kind of market like, for example, Vietnam, that they stole, I don't know, a lot of 200 gigawatts, you know, in, in, in very quick, you know. In, in just in a, in a few in a few months, you know, in a, in a couple of years, which is not, um, I mean, this is uh, not reasonable, you know. Uh, what is happening in, in Thailand is, is okay. It's an it's organic growth that every year we are reaching one, two gigawatt, you know, uh, I will say one, one gigawatt, which is uh, very, very good for the economy and as well for, for the companies and the industry around. Yes. Thank you. So, so thank you so much again. I think today is our, the end of our webinar. So thank you so much, Mr. Jose and Mr. Moore. Thank you.